Let's look at five expert tips to be financially savvy. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I want to talk about five expert tips to be financially savvy. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you may have seen me discuss financial literacy. It's something that I'm interested in. I'm a big fan of YouTube as a mechanism to help educate and teach people about financial literacy. I'm, I'm a fan of, of Dave Ramsey, and I know not everyone likes him, but I like his whole strategy of helping people get out of debt. It's great to see, and it's encouraging, you know, the whole snowball method and the way people turn their entire lives around and leave a legacy for their children, which is good. So when I see articles like this in mainstream media, we have to have a look at them. I have to go through them to see what is being taught to people because we don't really get any education in, uh, in finances or financial literacy here in Australia, do we? So let's, let's have a look at this. It's from Yahoo Finance. So five top tips, not just tips, top tips, everyone, to be financial, financially savvy from an expert. So there we go. Fantastic. So written by Eliza Bavin from Yahoo Finance. So after the events of the last 18 months, Australians are finally starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully. Hopefully. And while the last couple of years have been tough for many, well, okay, it has. For some people, it's been really tough. For others, it has been a little tough. And for some, they've gotten ahead. So it may also force many families to do a financial health check. CEO of the Financial Planning Association, Dante De Gori, told Yahoo Finance. And that's good. I mean, when's the last time you've had to do a financial health check? It's like most things in life. You don't really... Pay attention to it until you're until there's a problem. You know you don't really start looking at your health maybe until someone else you know runs into some issues. The majority of Australians maintained a DIY approach to their financial health, with 88 percent describing themselves as only trusting themselves and their partners with their finances. FPA research found. I, I can see that. However, there are several instances where it's worth hearing from an expert. The FBA CEO said, Coming out on the other side of the pandemic, there are lots of key learnings for Australians on how to better manage their financial situations, DeGory said. Okay, well, what would I suggest? Number one, I would suggest get rid of your debt entirely. Number two, get out of the habit of using debt to buy things. Number three, get into the habit of buying things with money that you have. Don't, so no credits, no afterpays, hipster lay by, okay? Afterpay, well, can you use uh, afterpay or zip to buy afterpay shares? I think you can actually with some brokers. That's the, I'm not recommending that, but it's funny, okay? None of that. Just spend what you have. Build up an emergency fund. Build up a, a war chest, and that will reduce your stress more than anything. When you've got a whole bunch of money sitting there, that's FU money, Life is a lot less stressful. All this stuff that's going on around the world, if you've got a you know, couple of years' worth of money stashed aside, are you going to be that stressed? All the people here, I mean, you know, people that have, uh, have got liquidity buffers, people that have prepaid on their home loans, do you think they're going to be stressed? I'm sure they'll be following the market. I'm sure they'll be following the news. They'll be keeping an eye on it. They may be a little concerned, but they're not going to fly off the handle. Where if someone's just at the edge, they're probably more likely to make an irrational, stupid decision, like go to a payday lender or sell shares right at the bottom. So coming out on the other side of the pandemic, there are lots of key learnings. Yep, we've read that already. Okay. So like how would you seek legal advice from a lawyer, get regular health checks from a doctor? We recommend seeking professional advice on your financial situation from a qualified financial planner. Ahead of financial planning week. Okay, I didn't know that was a thing. Did you know financial planning was a, a thing? Those of you that aren't financial planners that are watching. So, DeGrossi said, now is the time to redress your finances and do a financial health check. Well, see, what what Rachel and I do... I, well, what do you guys do in the comments? Let, let me know. I'm gonna, I think I'm peeking here on the volume. We have an Excel spreadsheet where Rachel will calculate project our cash flow a year out 
so we get an estimate of our tax bill. And that's what we have to do because we're small business people. We have our own business. We don't, you know, money comes in in big chunks when big projects get finished. YouTube is the most regular, you know, money coming in that I've ever had. Because otherwise, it's, you know, one month, okay, we've got a target, we've got to hit here, we've got this client there, we've got that job finishing there. That was one of the good things with the, the smaller jobs. You can generally churn them out every month. But it, it's a different world, I guess. That's why a lot of the YouTube stuff that we see is tailored towards employees, not small business people. But I guess small business people, it, you just have to plan, I'd say, on a year-by-year basis. Now, let me know, does someone else do that, everyone? Uh, I should really get a do a video on this this table, because uh, I mean she'll calculate all, all you know all the money coming in, and what's going out, so we can get an overview. Where all my jobs to make sure the money keeps coming in, and to you know I do the investment side of things. So we kind of divide and conquer with regards to that, and that's how it should be as a team. So both people should know if you're married. Both partners should know where everything at least is and what you're doing together. You hear all these stories of someone having no idea what their partner did with all the finances. I don't understand how that could happen. I, I don't get that. that that's, that's not healthy. So anyway, Financial Planning Week is about inspiring Australians from all walks of life and ages to consider their personal finances and find out how having a financial plan will give you greater peace of mind and security, he said. Here are the top five tips to stay financially financially um, savvy for de jury. De jury. So, one, seek out financial support that is available to you. Well, Australians are good at that. Look at what government supports you are eligible for and look at ways to manage your, the bills you have. Talk to your bank about freezing mortgage repayments or your landlord for a freeze or rent reduction when you're in lockdown, he said. Okay, I'm... Um, yeah, that, that's, that's what I would consider more like emergency situation advice. I guess you'd want to be at a point where you've got enough of emergency fund that you don't need to do that, that you can still keep paying your mortgage. Save what you can. Save any money you've left over once you've covered your expenses. If you don't have any, sorry, if you don't already have one, consider contributing your excess funds to an emergency fund. With so many unknowns... You never know whether you'll need to tap into it sooner than later. Look after yourself and guard your mental health. Being tired, worried, or stressed can lead to poor decision-making when it comes to dealing with your finances. Yep, that's good advice. It's good to see discussions of emergency funds. We never see that. I mean, we're we're getting this in a Yahoo article. You never see it in any of the ABC articles, particularly when they they march someone out as a victim and... I mean, does the ABC pay people for that? It really should. But anyway, there's never any discussion about, did you have an emergency fund? Do you even know what an emergency fund is? Three, budgeting is key. Yeah, but budgeting is so boring. Revisit your budget regularly, paying close attention to where you've struggled. Tackle those areas with a calm attitude and seek advice from a certified financial planner or other FPA member, financial professional, if you need help. Well, you, you, you need to know where every dollar you spend is going. That's what you need to know, really. You can set a budget, but if you ignore it, it's useless. You need to know where your money's going, how much is going on food, how much is going on this, how much is going on that, how much you're pissing away on stuff. One thing I like to do is maybe for a month, try this for a month if you haven't done it. I've, I've said this many times before, make micro additional payments to your mortgage. You've got it in your bank, you've got the account, I'm going to just transfer it there. So pick, okay, for one week, I'm not going to have any takeaway coffees. I'll get a thermos, I'll make it up, and I'll take it with me to work. And then every day, if I don't have a coffee, I'll take that $1 or that $5, and I'll put that off the mortgage. Or if I don't eat lunch out, I'll take that money I normally would have spent, and I'll put it off the mortgage. And then you see at the end of the month how much extra you've chipped away at that debt. And that saved you interest for years ahead, everyone. Years, decades even. And then you'll go, damn, and you, you, it can get addictive and you start thinking, okay, what can I sell? What, what don't I need? <laughs> At least that was just me. We're not using that iPad. We'll sell that. We're not using that. We'll sell that. And then chuck it off the mortgage. Go nuts. Then suddenly you've got a war chest. Suddenly you're one of the people here who've got housing liquidity buffers and who've prepaid you know, a year or six months ahead on your mortgage. 
That, that's why when we're hearing all these Doomer articles about, you know, interest rate, you know, interest rates will climb up and then everyone will get crushed. A lot of them won't because a lot of them have got buffers. Okay. So cancel what you don't need. Uh, Degori said it's time to stop all unwanted or forgotten direct debits and monthly subscriptions. Yes. Oh, yes. You need to. Often you'll just need time to sit back and look at all the bloody subscriptions you have, guys. And they can add up. I mean, I just, I canceled. I canceled. I got a, another monthly subscription and I just canceled it. I signed up for the $1 per month Xbox Game Pass for the PC. I wanted to try Humankind. And I thought, okay. I've been playing too much of it and staying up too late, so I've been doing all my work, going home, and then playing till midnight on this bloody strategy game. So I cancelled it, and I'll buy the full game once we finish this big job. And I got my $1 refund back. (laughs) So I'm happy with that. But for us, I didn't realise how many of these little monthly subscriptions we had until everything slowed down and I actually had breathing room. So, review the direct debits you have set up on your accounts to ensure you're not paying anything redundant or unnecessary. You'd be surprised how much is unnecessary, everyone. Stay on top of your payments to avoid getting caught out when bills arrive. Uh, Degori said it's important to plan ahead and stay on top of your payments. Continue making your regular payments as long as you can afford to. You'll be better off at the end the longer you stay on track. Okay. What says take control of your money, learn to maximize it with the woman's money movement? Oh, okay, there you go. Um, no, no blokes allowed. <laughs> so what do we think about these, these uh, five tips? Let's have a bit of a talk. So some good advice here. Discussion of an emergency farm. We like that. Uh, telling people to, to get rid of unnecessary subscriptions. Suggesting you get professional planning advice. There's all good Solid tips here. More, probably more leaning towards someone in dire straits or someone who's right in in financial, in a financial trouble zone, but still good, solid advice. So this is an article I, I'm quite fond of. I think Eliza did a good job, and I, you know, even though if it's spurking a bit financial planners week, I guess it's not the most glamorous of professions, but still, it's one that we need. What do you reckon, everyone? Let me know your thoughts. And opinions on this one. Do you like these financial tips? What other ones would you have? If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I find and put together here, there are a few ways you can help out. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Take care, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.